don't have a stick, is there a carrot or is there some way to encourage that that doesn't happen before the transfer to the developer and the request for the What are you talking about? It was right on the border of Summerfield over on Lunsford Road. Um, is that Winston sort of, Forest? What? Is it Winston Forest? No, it's Hillsdale West. And then it may also be happening on Hillsdale East. Did somebody miss the fact that it was a documented well, it was not conservation area in the county? Well, I don't know if that's the correct title. It's, it was a woodland something named. It was a designated. It wasn't a conservation area. It was. Um, under some kind of a tax structure that okay. it's oh, like tree it was a tree harvesting farm with a tree harvesting. Um, it was a tree okay. harvesting farm yeah. designation, but it was yeah, it wasn't it, it wasn't, wasn't a protected yeah, trees. No. They were all natural growth. What what the way we'll um, not do that is if <clears> that <throat> property were to come in to Summerfield and the developer wanted to develop it, the first thing that we say is what are the Important resources of this development. However, if he has submitted and approved a forestry plan for that property, mm -hmm. there's nothing, there's no reason why he can't cut those trees down to harvest them. Yeah. That's farming. Right. And, that, and that's a, that's a, that's, and that's part of the your agricultural <coughs> status yes. now. You have to, you have to turn you have in, to you've got trees, you have to turn in a forestry plan and they come in. We had to just timber our property. Yeah. Keep our agriculture status. Yeah. So that, that was selected Yeah. That's, that's different to me than. That's different than. Forest healthy. It's kind of like telling someone that they have to keep farming and can't not farm anymore. Yeah. But it because trees are, it, it can be confused with tree preservation. That property actually was about tree harvesting. <laughs> yeah. And you're probably getting a tax benefit for that. It is so, the. They harvest them remarkably in cold-de-sac cold shape. <laughs> Mark. It, there is, there, the related um, recommendations create criteria for determining what feasible is the, is their language in the UDO then it says to the greatest extent feasible for preserve or protect stands yeah. of trees. Any, any further comment on that? The recommendation is to create criteria for what is feasible. And, and I'll say that any time that, that we have to create criteria, the criteria is directly based on the comprehensive plan policy. And that, the comprehensive plan itself. So, since our, our objective is to try to preserve existing trees, I think we're or targeting large trees or you know natural growth. But is there a way would would we want to restrict tree farming? Not necessarily. And we'd have to parse between, you know, someone obviously it wouldn't affect people who already have a tree farm, but to sort of prevent people from coming in and buying a big lot of forest, turning it into a tree farm. It would actually contradict the agritourism, the idea of supporting farms in agritourism. So you can't parse out trying to protect the woodland to some extent. Well, if it's being if it's being farmed, it's being farmed, and then more trees are growing, and then it's being farmed again. I mean, there's an inherent tension in this in this policy, yeah. and at the extreme. Clear cutting shall be avoided, and we can picture what clear cutting might be. It's, it's uh, all the trees are gone before they submit the site plan or the development. The policy goes further and says new development should incorporate significant clusters of trees, and that implies some site planning, some inventory of significant clusters. Uh, there may be disagreement over what's significant, but it at least calls for the proposer of that development plan or subdivision to identify before clear cutting. I, I, just, 
I don't think it would be fair to say that in Summerfield we don't want any tree harvesting. And that, I wouldn't be expecting to go that far. I mean, you know, there's something so that, um, that's, um, that's regulating people's ability to farm their trees up their lands. Many things. I don't, so what stops a developer, though, from doing exactly what you just said, where they just clear-cut everything as agriculture and then sell it to a developer who wants to put houses in there? If you've been approved as a bona fide farm of forestry beforehand, nothing, and it really, it doesn't matter because it's not, it was a farm. It wasn't a wooded, a woodland area. You don't get to consider it as a wooded area. It was that person's farm. So it's so bad. have in some of the other like that? Are you aware of that we have done? I don't know that we have any. I, I haven't looked at an inventory in a long time. That, that bypasses the film entirely. It goes to the Fort uh, County DNR. Um, it goes to well, it goes to the um, Ag Extension okay. and um, and the county. So it could be converted. So an Ag zoning could be converted to a tree farming designation. A, a residentially zoned. Property could be converted to a tree farming if they got a, a tax number and an, an ag an ag number summer or um, North Carolina is a is a very farm farming friendly state. There's cases where somebody grew hot house tomatoes in the back of their property in a residential development, got an ag number, <laughs> and were exempt from zoning. Any, it's not, any I'm not saying that it's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the question here was, can, can the ordinance require a tree survey? Certainly. For, for area, if it's a Does the UDO do that? Um, do you think that came in? Can we talk about it? Yeah. 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 It was that we will um, tell the zoning board to write language that requires a tree survey as well as other survey of other resources because there's so much identified in the comp plan that's important in addition to trees. And my suggestion was to create something called a resource map that's beyond just a tree survey, beyond just an environmental inventory, and, and we'll define Exactly. Yes. Basically, the resource map is anything that's a resource is identified in the compact plan. And then we go and list those out. But Remember, last last meeting, I think there was a suggestion you can wear, wear fences. Um, farm fences have a certain character uh, element to them that that should be, would be identified in that type of a preliminary plan. Get any further, um, there's uh, uh, the recommendation strengthen language for preserving existing trees versus replanting. For those of you who, who raised that point, Let's say, th th does that seem to address? What did we call that? Valuable trees? Desirable. 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 <coughs> You know, to some degree, market forces, you know, will define that because the developers who respect the land and the big trees are going to get greater value for their development than the ones that... Those are on one hand. Yeah. Right. Well, the yeah, other is... My hand fills up a lot quicker with the ones you don't yeah. care about, but, right. but it is, yeah. But you, you have a very... And there's some developers, I guess, there's one recently who very wanted very much to preserve trees, sold three adjacent lots to a builder who came in and clear cut the, all three lots all at once because it was easier. Yeah. And all the rest of the homes were being were being picked out of the trees. Mm -hmm. And because they threw, sold three, and I actually talked to him about, how can I, you know, I want to I keep you from doing that. So, so that's something that I can, that example is something I can use to strengthen yeah, that language. And there, and there are two companies who have looked at the land out there and they're going to take out all the big railroads and magnolias and so forth. But yeah, that's, that's what I mentioned. And then we preserve the trees, build mm -hmm. around the trees. 
just going to yeah. pave the way in much, much more value. It does. Yeah. It does, yeah. Any, any further comment on this recommendation? <coughs> going, going into 3.6, farmland activities and horses and other valuable livestock in new residential areas shall generally be encouraged as part of the thematic and functional design of new residential areas. Okay. And I have this recommendation is to create because the comments were about this. There seems to be a missing history. So the recommendation here is to create a zoning district that encourages a mixed use of residential and agriculture. Maybe you should call it a plan development. Well, that was one person's comment was using that PG tool to create an ag residential district. And by that, Terry, you mean something that is explicitly mixed and not just a residential development that allows agricultural uses or an agricultural development that allows residential. Um, when I say encourages, so it would be, um, if, it, if it's just what you said, one that allows the other, it's not much of an encouragement. So, um, I'm not sure what that, is, what that encouragement is. <laughs> but. Oh, I, I was, I was uh, in a friendly way, I was challenging yes. Carrie about whether she meant a deliberately mixed use agricultural and residential district as opposed to a residential residential district that also allows agricultural uses or an agricultural district that also allows residential. The word encourage is here instead of allowing. So a new district. You could do a new district. I would say, in my opinion, would be there would be a new district. Nicole, honestly, that's one of the fastest growing neighborhoods in the country. It's called Agrivid. And they mix. And they mix. Purple Hill is one of the most residential and agricultural and farming. And it's and we did that one in the school here. Luke Stafford had a farm right behind the school. He sprayed some sewer out. It was great. I think that's the way they were during biblical times. They just go around. And, 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 and people who, people who oh, choose to buy in such a zoning district know that they're, that they're buying yeah. into their yeah. lifestyle. Right. And that's why it doesn't say that allows mixed use, it says encourages. Okay. So is that like Polar Farms? Is that. No, what you're trying to say right now, to most of our open space allow agricultural, but haven't taken advantage of it. In fact, a lot of your neighborhoods can farm your open spaces for agricultural purposes uh, right now. Andrew, look up Great Agrohood. There's about 200 of them. In but it's generally not. It's, called it's generally not. Yeah. Seriously, Agrohood. And there's several, <laughs> and you'll come up with different the, names of those. The second recommendation is strengthen the language to encourage uh, agriculture to, re the, to remain AG is one of those, or to be converted to an agritourist. What does that mean? This just means, well, this is just what somebody said. Okay. Actually, I repeated okay. the, the comment because I wasn't sure what the answer is to that. So I, I think to, I get the, the point. So it's to encourage the agricultural uses to remain in agriculture use? Mm -hmm. That was Jason. But why should we convert it to ag tourism? So that it so that it's not stays sustainable. So it stays some kind of ag use rather than residential. The or it can be converted to ag tourism or some other not um, farm related. It was related to the comp plan asking for helping small farm, family farms stay viable and not get, you know. You could do like a hay rides on, on, pump, on pumpkin day. Hay rides on pumpkin day. <laughs> 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 oh, I keep so good. Yeah. 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 So, so this is to strengthen that back language that yeah. we. So that's, that's the farmer who says, I can't farm anymore. Yeah. And yeah. before he sells it to a residential developer, it's encouraging 
that he or she to look at as an optional way just to make money out of their farm after all. Mm -hmm. But to have residential, potentially have residential be part of the farm. That's the other, that's a different comment. That's the other, those two might come together, but. Yeah, because if you had an example. Did you say ag tourism or agriculture? I think you should put it in that way. I think that's what it, it is. And it's a visualization if anybody was wondering what that was. They could Google it, what we did for that. Is that the way it's spelled? And then what it'll do is it'll bring up names of different, of different neighborhoods around the country that give that, that they, they, they open space, rural character, um, all of those things that everybody, no matter what side of the issue you're on, yeah, those things that everybody in this room is trying to do in reserve. So it will help to give that vision. You could almost combine these two could. comments, okay. but you could. Uh -huh. yeah. Are there any more comments on this recommendation? The next <coughs> recommendation is calls upon the zoning board to research zoning districts for uh, encouraging equestrian development. But that probably could go up with the others as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Research zoning district. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's yeah. a close condition. Yeah. Deborah, I, I have, I searched, it doesn't sound like it's a zoning district. It might not be, it, sounds like it might be something different we do in Summerfield. They may not do a zoning district there. It may be how we do it here. Well, like a, like a golf club, instead of having golf course and farms. Yeah. Like well, it's not not little farms. It's 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 one big. It's you. It's honestly, it's like I'm, I didn't wasn't being facetious. I mean, if you think about the way we did it in biblical times, you had your neighborhood and your community set up in your farm, where your animals and your vegetables and everything. You might have a market, so it might be all part of the same thing. And then you have your houses that are around it. So I don't know how they zone it in other communities. If we may decide in Summerfield that hey, we're going to make it a zoning district. But the concept is called an aggregate, and right, it's right, growing. Right, right. And that's that's what I'm after. Is the, the recommendation? When I con I'll connect these, when I send it okay. out, everybody okay. adjust it. Okay. And over until the other hours, you're just like doing it. There's a summer tow farm right there. Exactly. Your residential the, component, and you got a large farm with a market. The next, there's a, um, under, agri under equestrian, it should be SP, meaning a special use permit. Is that correct? Yes, and that should okay. be. Okay, so that, that's a, a minor technical correction to the yeah. UDF. That's come up before. Okay. Um, the next talks about researching call for the zoning board to research how farm-related uses are allowed Just to ensure compatibility with this policy. Ah, uh, okay. So the, this means um, how it's are allowed or are permitted. Like, um, are the permitting requirements too strong for farm-related uses? Are the, far, are the permitting requirements strong enough to, to be compatible with our comp plan so that so that they are compatible that's what that means. Okay. And the conference plan of course says shall generally be encouraged and not discouraged. Yeah. So we probably not have to okay. too strenuous at um, and there's a question here to reconcile the zoning with standards for horse farms so that the standards for horse farms would be more clear. Yes. Clearly we call that. Yeah. And just, just to use the one set by the agriculture extension. It's just there. It's just different. Some says 10 acres, some says 5 acres. And right. The PDOs, and I think uh, it would be good to nod to that. Good to nod for that and make sure that where our zoning isn't prohibiting something that would otherwise be allowed. Right. Based on, based on um, ag extension. Exactly. So right. standards on development standards that talk about um, yeah. development um, itself. 
the, the next calls for researching adding zoning to Are you, you, you suggesting a district? Um, we don't have a VAP right now, but this is a voluntary act district that would, um, for new farmland, this, this encourages people to, to have farms that <coughs> create buffers around other um, properties that might come in so that they're, so that they're um, compatible. We're talking about new farmland design standards, and this is the only tool I'm aware of that we could actually regulate a new farm. I think the question kind of is, can we have design standards? And I'm thinking for existing farms, there's no way, but for new farmland, you certainly could. And, and I can say, such as, um, it, it just said such as, something that, that allows us to do that. And I think at one time we could talk about we did. doing this, but it doesn't I don't really know what happened. Yeah. The county has has voluntary act districts that and you're voluntarily um, doing this. I don't I don't know, and that's why research is in there. If we can require, okay. go ahead. Yeah, sorry. You could voluntarily drop your volunteer if if, if you wanted to subdivide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, the next recommendation to include farmland activity in the general design standards. So. That calls for you know, being explicit about uh, farmland. Okay. Um, the next policy is what three point seven. Seven. <laughs> create an ag tourism zoning district. Um. In addition to allowing ag ag tourism as an allowed use in other districts. And actually, this is this is something I don't know if we really can do because ag tourism is is an exempted farming activity. So who's? Let's see the person who made this comment. Priscilla, Church. Priscilla, do you have any, any sense of? Well, I just didn't see anything about it in here. Um, so I was asking about it because I know we have that zoning already. And that, I mean, there's nothing to reference or... And that's because um, ag tourism, by definition, is something that's part of a, um, a bona fide farm that we can't zone. So maybe what we need is some other kind of zoning district that isn't exempted from zoning. That's ag tourism. Which is it's that? a tough one. Well, that's a chicken. I mean, if you have a zoning district, it's, yeah. it can't be exempt. Exactly. Well, I'm, I'm, I was honoring the comment of the desire to create a zoning, a zoning district that would allow us to be more regulatory. But that's right. how you would accomplish design standards that uh -huh. I was talking about, right? Um, I mean, you, yeah, that's how you would accomplish design standards, by creating a district that allows you to, to have zoning restrictions. Whether or not we can in the state of North Carolina is a different story. So instead of that, we would say research or find out. Yeah. That would be a white root research. Okay. Well, let's just say. Um, well, it just seems like, you know, I, um, at the ag tourism facility that we have now, uh -huh. there's a lot of uses that, that happen there that aren't necessarily agri tourism that don't seem to be, you're right, and the, and the statute says that when a farm use is converted to something like a wedding center, and it's very specific in the statute, it doesn't lose its status as a farm because it's still there because of its location near the farm. That's how, a lot, that's how friendly to farming North Carolina law is. And it doesn't take away its status. When it becomes all sorts of things because it's draws right. that it's it just seems like it is all sorts of things and it just, mm -hmm. if, if you're gonna yeah, emphasize that then you should be able to you know have some sort of control over that we can make it we can make it clearer the threshold at which we think an act a bona fide farming thing is crosses that threshold and needs to be 
controlled, that are controlled by zoning. I think that's what you, you mean. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I should then. Uh... Well, that comment below, the recommendation below, review the zoning and development mm -hmm. standards for mm -hmm. ag tourism. Mm -hmm. And that is for agricultural tourism. And actually, uses. I think this one is making sure that it's allowable enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's almost a, a conflict between these two. Mm -hmm. Is there any commentary on that? Yes. So Carrie, are you saying strike the upper one then because they are in conflict? Um, no, I think I think this tells me that we're looking for a balance. We want to encourage using farms as ag tourism, oh, we but we want to control. come up. We want to have some sort of threshold that says you're not a farm anymore. You're, you're, you're too, yeah, you're getting, but the you're, state doesn't determine that. No, well, it's a pretty, it's a pretty current ongoing, and the Department of Insurance, and Fire Marshal, and everybody's all in conflict with it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, these things that say research, are you supposed to be making all of them peach? Is that something you're supposed to do? No, be I think the, the peach one was... You're going straight to the zoning board. I was afraid of... The peach is for Carrie to research with the attorney or... Or with Piedmont Tribe Regional Council or something. Green beans. Green beans. Green beans. Green Any further com comments or suggestions about the recommendations for 3.7, supporting agricultural tourism? And on to 3.8, compatible farmland activities and keeping of horses and other suitable lot. Uh, livestock Wait, shall generally be encouraged. Is that, did I get this one? 3.8? 3.8? Open space exhibition of Did I do that Are one? we in, we're, we're in, 3.8, uh, open, 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 open space acquisition of Open space acquisition Space acquisition. Yeah. yeah. Right. 3.7 was about. Oh, I got, I got. 3.7 is small, small. Yep. Okay. okay. Got it. We have uh, 10 minutes before we're done. Okay. Okay. Public, um, public open space acquisition. Research opportunities to include public ac acquisition of open space during development. Requests. Work in coordination with the trails and open space. Any, so, yeah. any comment or further adjustment to that? Okay. On to 3.9. This is about green buffer strips. recommendation is to employ land use and development practices that spread out the traffic demand. That is so the I, I focused on the, on the comment talking about having roads, concerned about roads having to be widened. The, the answer to that is distributing um, traffic better so that a, a widened road is required. So, so that but I think it's inevitable in some places. What road widening? Mm -hmm. I can't say that it's not. I can only say that I I believe in focusing more on on land use and spreading out um, transportation impacts than putting them all onto one road that gets widened, then draws more traffic, then gets widened again. It's kind of a insane. Do we have the proper language then to support that? <laughs> um, two, two entryways, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, part of it is two entryways. Um, part of it, this when it says land use and development practices, this might be um, uh, having really strong stub requirements. 
um, putting in a sign at the end of the existing neighborhood saying another neighborhood might someday come here? Okay. Um, and just to clarify, because I'm, I'm curious, so this, I agree, don't like the sound buffer at all, but are some of those things, like, do you have control? Because, like, no. 73 was the state. I mean, we didn't have no. any control that happened through the week. Control no control. We don't. Over the we don't at the end of the day, but we can. We can encourage practices that. Oh, oh we made. We made to help them decide on the material. But we had no choice on the sound wall. So the one I'm. Oh, I didn't know we were talking about. Yeah, really, okay. Is that what you meant? Really, yes. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, don't, I, I don't like it. Yeah, and that's we had no choice. We had no choice. Yeah. Okay. We did help yeah, with putting, you know, with uh, helping them set the location. Um, with you know, was the neighborhood didn't wouldn't, wasn't in favor of the idea that the whole sign being blocked, so they ended up moving it up on that diagonal. But uh, we had no choice over the, whether the wall would be there or not. That was NC DOT working with neighbor with residents in that area that decided they wanted one. So, so because the comprehensive plan says this, and because that noise wall, yeah, when, when the NCDOT came to us saying, let's talk about <coughs> the landscaping portion of the project. And what are your priorities? It's my my assumption is that one of those priorities is going to be wherever there is landscaping potential along that wall to try to soften it. And I'm looking at John as a council member because yeah. that will be a council decision. Yeah, that's what they say. It looks unfinished. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, it does. So the that's other, how we address the, it. There's a large section of that that no landscaping can be in front of, which Correct. disappoints me. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, because we'll try to yeah. Right. The there, is some, there is some that can be, and maybe the line will be say? drawn the road to the Jersey barriers. The Jersey barriers? That's what they're called. The concrete yeah. barriers? Those are called Jersey yeah, barriers. Yeah, I'm from Jersey. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry, I can't get back. All right, from here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the the next recommendation <laughs> is to include tree surveys and requirements for development proposals. There we are back again. And that'll, that'll come as part of reason. Okay. Yeah. And that, that will encourage the preservation of buffer. Okay. The next, add street yards to the subdivision requirements. Um, a street yard is a street buffer. I, should I make street, it? Street yard buffers? Should I make it that way? Yeah. I think it's probably to make sure it really explain what we're talking about. Okay. I can even say roadside. Okay. Well. The I can make it buffer because there's there's also the rural roadside buffer that can be included in that. The next calls for prioritize the use of natural elements over man-made buffers. I need no more Jersey buffers. No, no, what is that? No more sound No more sound No more what? Uh, no more, no more, no more, no no more wood? Walls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of a call, too. You feel like a farmland in the front as a buffer to the farmland itself rather than a tree yeah, line. I think that that would not be you would want to 